These videos are brought to you by MSCCasino.com and the Macau Sporting Club. MSCCasino.com, check it out. You are watching Sports Matters TV. Happy days, happy days in Rochester Park Hotel, boy, when you were... Uh, yes, I, I, boxed, uh, I boxed down there, Ireland versus uh, France one time. Yeah, yeah, I was there. We had a few internationals and it was down in Cork. It was the only time I've actually ever been to Cork. And uh, I really enjoyed it. And I had great people down there, definitely. And that was some lineup. It was yourself, you know, Paddy Burns, you know, there was Mickey Connolly. What a lineup. Oh, that was the right treat for all the fans that were there, you know? Oh, geez, it was brilliant. So it was, it was, uh, no, it was great. Like, it's one of the, like, obviously, I boxed in a lot of friendly kind of internationals before, but that was one that always sticks out in my mind. So it was, it was good old crack. Good times, and obviously you turned pro not long after that, which was a uh, which was a great move, Jason. But uh, like we have to talk about the documentary first of all. It's it's popping up on all our TV screens, right? So obviously lift your heels. It's going to be huge. It's obviously you know it's going to show all you know the backstage kind of stuff, all the build up to your world title fight. Uh, what can fans expect? They can expect, you know, just um, I suppose maybe a lot of fans don't really know or see what goes on uh, behind closed doors and they will get to see a little kind of behind the scenes in, in the terms of training camp and, you know, living and eating and, and what goes into an actual training camp. But in this documentary as well, it was something a little bit different for me. It kind of touches on, uh, you know, my personal life, relationships and uh, different things that... Uh, outside of boxing that you know man, many people don't really get to see so it, it, it's going to be uh, it's going to be very interesting uh, viewing for sure we can't wait like and the feedback's been incredible jason like i've you know i've been lucky enough to speak to you over the years i did a great interview with you eight years ago when you turned pro but like a lot's changed in your life you know what i mean you obviously you were based in the states for so many years and you know we were watching your journey but it's been you know an incredible journey so far with the best still to come yeah, without a doubt, you know it's uh, it's been, oh, it's been a crazy road. Like it's been it's been full of ups and downs, and it's been a bit like a roller coaster, you could say. Um, the way that my career has panned out, I have been all over the world with it. I have been on highs, I've been on lows, and I think that that's a that's a journey of of a lot of boxers as well. You know, boxing is a very up and down sport, and nothing really ever goes smoothly with it. But um, yeah, it's been a it's been a phenomenal uh, it's been a phenomenal couple of well seven or eight years I think now. So it's uh, it's been great, a lot of great experiences, a lot of great memories, and uh, met a lot of great people along the way also. Definitely. No, did you get homesick? Obviously, based on yourself in the states, you know, earlier on, like you know, we've only I think you've had you know twenty one fights. I think twenty have been in America. One's been in the UK, but. How, how did you find, you know, fighting in America, you know, from, from the go? Because obviously, you know what I mean, you had a great relationship with Golden Boy Promotions. You know, you, you we watched you back here in Ireland. We were super proud, you know. Every night we'd stay up and watch the fights, you know, late at night. But obviously it was the perfect start. And, like, you know what I mean, it's been a perfect start all the way through. But to be best in America from the go, obviously, was a dream come true. Yeah, well, without a doubt, you know, I, I, I went and made my professional debut in the MGM Grand on a Canelo undercard, like, Serena. You know, that was, that was the reason that I started boxing was, you know, I watched Marco Antonio Barrera fight Prince Nassim Hamid in the MGM Grand. And yeah. I remember, you know, before the actual entrances into the, into the ring, it shows the fighters coming out of the dressing rooms and the, and the little hallway before you make that walk. And I can remember seeing the, the symbol of the big uh, MGM lion up before Barrera walked out into the, into the crowd. And, I just remembered like walking and seeing that, seeing that icon image and just all the memories went back yeah. to whenever I was watching that as a young kid and all the butterflies and everything that I got from that. But at that stage, I didn't walk out to a, a full house of the MGM. I was one of the first fights on and there wasn't too many in the crowd, but it was still a great experience for me to, to live in that whole to live and to experience that whole fight week environment um, leading up to my pro debut was was unbelievable. It's a real, and like, as I say, for me personally, for any boxer that I know up and coming, like you were the poster man, like you still are the poster boy, you know, 
you went out there, you showed people how it's done. Obviously, you know what I mean? We're known in Ireland for our boxing. It's probably the only sport in the Olympics where we do well. And you know what I mean? We're known for our fighting. You went out there, you know, you showed all the Irish lads, you know, look, you can do it. You can achieve it. Um, you know, you spent so many years out there. We always missing home, though. That's the question. I know you got back home quite a bit, but obviously it must be hard being away from home, Jason. Yeah, it definitely was. You know, I think I was 22, 23 years of age when I moved out there. I was young. I was, you know, ready to spread my wings and 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 live a completely different life than what I'd be used to back in Donegal and Ireland. And you know, I went out there and the thought and in my mind was I'll never be home again. Like this is LA. I'm this is you know, this is dreams come true. And yes, you know, for the first six months to a year it was an unbelievable experience. Um, you know, I was at red carpet events, movie premieres, you know, meeting all the celebrities and, you know, living in that, in that high life. And of course it was exciting and it was great, but after a while I kind of got very bored of it. And I was like, this isn't for me. Like I just didn't really, I didn't feel comfortable in that environment. It was great whenever you know, you're running about in the early days asking them all for selfies and, you know, stuff like that. But, you know, after a while, then I kind of got a wee bit boring, to be honest. And it just it just wasn't something that, that sat with me uh, very well, the, the type of person that I am. But, um, yeah, it was an unbelievable experience. I definitely got homesick, you know. You miss all the, all the simple things that you take for granted back at home. Um they seem much bigger and better whenever you're away from home as well, you know, but it's just really, you know, the, the people and your family and the loved ones and everyone you grew up with, like your, your, your comforts of home, but you do have to step outside of those comfort zones to, to achieve and to, to reach goals that is all normal. Definitely, Jess. No, I always say the best is the come, right? You're, you're, Obviously, you know what I mean? You're still early in your career. People say you don't peak until you're 30, 31, 32, 33. But, you know, the last, the last very obviously, world title shot, you know, major setback, you know what I mean? A uh, really bad injury. Like, you know what I mean? It's, it's you know, anytime I speak to, like, you know, I've been lucky enough to speak to Triple G and boxes over the years. And, you know, they say, look, a, a defeat will define you. I'll show you what you're made of. You can bounce back. But obviously, you still want to box. You know what I mean? You have big expectations moving forward. And that's something that you will do, yeah? Yeah, like um, I broke my jaw in the last fight. I broke it in two places. So I had plates in here and a plate in here. And uh, it was only three weeks ago I got those plates removed. The bone now is fully healed 100%. Um, because I had to get that surgery, I'm still a little bit in recovery and uh, waiting for this jaw to heal up. But once this jaw heals up, we'll sit down with the team. We'll have a talk. And uh, we'll start planning and seeing what's next then for uh, for the for the journey. Definitely. And Jason, like we like you know we, we we never look too far ahead, but like your name's always mentioned with the big names, and rightly so. You know what I mean? You you've an incredible reputation worldwide. You know for being an incredible boxer. But you know there's always names like Chris Eubank Jr. You know Triple G. Um, you know what I mean? Th these are all names that will come in, in good time. But obviously. You know, your, your ambition is to be a world champion. We all believe it's going to happen. We all know it's going to happen. That's obviously still burning inside you. Yeah, like, you know, if one of those names came up now right away and my team came to me with uh, with the likes of a Triple G, Canelo, Chris Eubank, you know, those those names would excite you and those names would, uh, would make you think, right, let's let's rock and roll here, you know, let's uh, let's get ready. But... As I said, look, I still have, have some time to heal and recover from the surgery. And uh, whenever I sit down with my team, we're going to pick out what the what the next path is and whether it's going to be uh, Triple G or Golovkin, or sorry, Triple G or Chris Eubank or any of those. We'll soon see. But, you know, as of now, it's just uh, healing up and getting recovered. Definitely. Jason, what way did you plan your career? Like, obviously, you know, when, when, when you're looking at your career earlier on, did you always say to yourself, look, I might retire when I'm 36, 38, 34, 32? What way did you kind of have a plan in your head, you know what I mean, to, to bow out of, of boxing? Because you obviously have, you know, plans after boxing, but, you know, how can you see it go for you? Yeah, I, I've, I've always said, you know, I want to kind of get out of boxing in my early 30s. You know, I don't want to be doing this sport for the wrong reasons. I don't want to be in the sport 
um, taking punches and taking hard fights for the money or for the sake of it, you know, um, because I can't let go of the sport. So I've always said to myself that I want to step away from the sport in my early 30s and, you know, go and live my life then because anybody knows, no matter if it's boxing, if it's anybody at elite level in any sport or, you know, that's a very successful business person in their career, there's so many sacrifices go into it and there's so many people that... Um, there's so many people that probably don't see you as much as they should see you and are affected as well by the sacrifices that I make. So um, I would love to be able to walk away from the sport in my early 30s and be able to spend time with my loved ones and family and do things with them that, that I wasn't able to do before. Definitely. Now, you're a family man like myself. Obviously, I'm lucky enough to have three kids, but obviously family changes everything, Jess, and that's all that matters. At the end of the day, you're in the ring, you leave the ring, and, and family's in front of you. Obviously, that's a big thing for you. And you said you've matured. I know as we're young, we're mad, you know, we're ambitious, and there's nothing wrong with that. But obviously, you know, you know, being a father, you know, being being a, a husband and, you know, a life partner, that's all very important moving forward. Yeah, you know, that's, that's the foundation of your life, and that's the foundation of your happiness, I think, if... You know, you can create a good foundation with a, with a good partner, a good family, and good people around you in a good environment, then um, you're going to be successful and you're going to want it life no matter what. But um, I'm very lucky to have to have that kind of core group of people around me and just so delighted to have them in my life, supporting me, being with me through the ups and the downs and going through the hard times and you know, I really do want to be able to give back to them after boxing and, you know, be able to give them the full time attention and love as well. I love it. Now, Jason, when the time's right, are we going to see a fight in Ireland? Because, look, you, you could fill out Crow Park, you know what I mean, the Aviva, Donny God alone will, will fill that out. But, look, us Corkonians, you know, the Munster heads, the Dublin heads, we all adore you. So, surely, we'll get that Irish fight. And hopefully, hopefully it'll be a Canelo Versus quickly, a triple G versus, you know, quickly. Surely it's going to happen in the near future. You're going to make it happen. Well, that would be, you know, that would be unbelievable to have a fight, Croke Park, Aviva. Even with, at this stage, the three arena would be unbelievable to get the fight from boxing back into Ireland. The game would be something else because people know how passionate the, uh, the Irish fans are. Yes, look, I'm from Donegal. I love Donegal so much, but like, I love Ireland, you know, first and foremost, I love Ireland, no matter if it's Cork, Dublin, Galway, wherever, like the, the people in Ireland are just so amazing and the support that I've had throughout my career from everybody in Ireland has been just very, very special to me. And I definitely think that boxing needs to come back to Ireland, whether it's me, whether it's the younger generation coming through, I believe that you know, the fans and the people from Ireland deserve like types of boxing in the future. Oh, I love it. Last of all, Jason, we know uh, our golden girl, Kelly Ted, is fighting Amanda Serrano. Um, how would you see that fight going? It's obviously a tough fight, but look, Kelly, she's well equipped. You know, she's the elite of the elite. How would you see that fight going? I think that this fight's going to be, uh, it's going to go down in history. It already has gone down in history and it hasn't even happened yet. But, you know, this fight, this fight to me is Katie's biggest test. And look, Katie is as much of a champion outside the ring as she is inside the ring. She's an absolute down to earth person and one of the nicest people you'll meet. But um, she, I believe that she can go in there. She can take care of business and she can, can come away um, one of the greatest ever to great, great sport against Amanda Serrano because this is the biggest test on one of the biggest stages and it's exciting and, and for Katie, her team and her family, I really hope that she goes out there and does it and does herself proud. Definitely. Now quickly, I know you know you play a gal, right? Now, in Ireland, people play a gal with broken collarbones, you know, cruciate ligament damage, you know, broken jaws. Are you, you going to go back playing gal? Are you still playing gal? Because look, we're Irish and we still, people can play with a broken hand, you know the way it is. Yeah, well, um, as long as Oscar or my management team or nobody finds out, like I did play a bit of hurling and a bit of, bit of Gaelic football there back a month and, or a year and a half, two years ago, just before lockdown. 
And uh, look, I love the gas, so I do. I really do. Hurling, really, whatever it may be. Um, I really do enjoy it. I go down there training the odd night with the lads. And uh, who knows, I might be back on the pitch short league as well. You never know. I love it. Yeah, so listen, we can't wait for the documentary this Thursday. Virgin Media, we'll have all the links up. It's an honour, a privilege. Uh, I'll be at your next fight, you know, whenever that will be announced. I promise you I'll be there. Um, and as I said, look, all the best. You're an inspiration to many of us and all your boxers across the country. So keep up the good work, my man, and we can't wait to see you lift that world title. Appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me on. Thanks very much, lad. Be sure to check out and support all our media partners, Sports Matters, bringing the sports home.